How is it going everyone and welcome back to the channel for another Star Wars Battlefront 2 video and in this video we're going to be talking about everything overpowered in Star Wars Battlefront 2. Now I asked some of you guys what you think is overpowered in this game so I've taken that into consideration for this video. Now if something isn't mentioned here in this video it's because A I don't think it's overpowered or B I just don't know about it. So go ahead and let me know in the comments below if you think I missed anything that's overpowered. Now it's been a while since I've done a video discussing everything overpowered in Battlefront 2 and a lot has changed since the last time. So there's a lot here for new players to take out of this and seasoned players too. Now if you're enjoying the videos here on the channel lately then be sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. And just very quickly before we dive into this guys, I checked some statistics on YouTube and only 17% of people who are subscribed to this channel have notifications switched on. So if you do want to avoid YouTube's mistreatment of letting you know when I post a video, then be sure to click that bell as it actually does help. I've been testing it out with a few burner accounts over the past few weeks and it actually is working at the moment. So yeah, be sure to click that bell. But anyway now, let's dive into this and kickstarting off this video, the first thing that I want to talk about is vehicle damage against heroes. The vehicle damage against heroes is just so overpowered and to be honest, it's actually kind of dumb. If you have one guy in a lobby who dedicated his time to hunting down heroes with an ATST or an AAT or whatever it is, you're probably not going to have a fun time playing as a hero because you can get melted and borderline one shot. I've seen videos of ATST missiles one-shotting heroes even though it's supposedly been fixed. But even without that, it's still just, it's too much. The heroes can't really do a great deal against vehicles, but a vehicle can melt a hero in seconds. That is just not balanced and it gets abused by a lot of players. So this is something that I really hope gets looked at sooner rather than later. And the next thing that I want to talk about is Anakin. Now, I've said this a thousand times before, but I don't think Anakin is necessarily overpowered from a damage output perspective with his abilities. What I think is overpowered is his ability combination. You can be affected by three and actually four of his abilities without you getting a chance to escape or defend yourself. He can pull you towards him, hit you with heroic might, which you can't stop because you're on the ground, or he can passionate strike you, which you cannot block. Or, if his retribution is ready, he can just use that and pretty much end you. Dice can nerf Anakin all they like, but at the end of the day, it comes down to his ability combination. You can't really stop it, and a smart player using Anakin can exploit the ability combination so you don't stand a chance. I openly admit, I use Anakin all the time, because he's my favourite Star Wars character, but even I can't defend his ability combination. It's too overpowered. Something has to change. Now Anakin's Retribution is a big talking point. Some people say it's OP, some say it's the reason they die as Anakin. Honestly, I see both sides of the story. Sometimes Retribution can feel OP, sure, but its refresh rate is the slowest of any ability in the game and you have to absorb heaps of damage to even have it activated. And it does actually glitch out from time to time that actually ends up getting you killed, so I think Retribution is a bit of a hard one. I just honestly think that all heroes should have a fourth ability or Anakin shouldn't. I'm going to put a poll in the top right corner of this video about the retribution ability to see what you guys think about it. But now moving on to the next thing that I want to talk about and that is Vader's choke and lightsaber throw combination. Now this is something that a lot of you guys actually brought up when I asked you about overpowered things in Battlefront 2 and the more I looked into it I have to say this combination is actually really really overpowered. If you have Vader's Choke Star cards where the damage is boosted and his lightsaber throw card where it doubles the damage on the way back, you can do in the regions of 5 to 600 damage with this combination. Just with the click of two different buttons, you've basically taken a hero from max health to basically nothing and in some cases actually nothing. This is without a doubt one of Vader's strengths, this combination, and it is very satisfying, but it is kind of overkill with the right star cards on. Granted, the gameplay footage in the background doesn't actually have those star cards maxed out because I did switch platforms so you don't see the full extent of it here. But this is something that I didn't actually originally think was an issue, but the more I've looked into it, it kind of is. Now the next thing in Battlefront 2 that I think is overpowered is the Officer class, and I know that's not just me that thinks that, everybody thinks that. The officer class is the easiest way to get a hero at the start of the game and you'll notice that the people at the top of the lobbies at the beginning of games and the ones who get the heroes quick 
nine times out of 10, they are using the officer class. You can get like four to 500 battle points off the spawn without even doing anything besides boosting teammates. And of course, on top of that, you can get more battle point boosts through the officer star cards. And because of that, it's a can't beat them, join them kind of situation. So there's always so many officers in the lobbies because everyone wants to get that hero. The officer needs to be brought down to the level of the rest of the classes. Because this has actually been going on for a very, very long time and it definitely needs to be looked at. Now another thing that I wanted to bring up here is the Ovisian Gunner. She has been so overpowered since she came into the game. You can melt a hero down to a pulp in a second and you can get like half a dozen kills with the gunner in like one to three seconds. It's kind of ridiculous for a reinforcement especially. Now don't get me wrong, the Ovisian Gunner is really fun to use but it doesn't take a genius to figure out that they are pretty unbalanced. The anti-armor mode can nearly one-shot most classes and has 2 meters of splash damage. The defensive stance, you constantly get healed for damaging and getting kills and it's the most on steroids ability out of most of if not all of the reinforcements. The charge ability I actually think is totally fine but the issues start and end with the abilities and the main blaster by itself, it's undeniably overpowered. But now moving on and the next thing that I want to talk about in this video is Palpatine. Because there are tons of people that think he is really overpowered, but there's also people that think he's totally fine and should be powerful because he's Palpatine. Like don't get me wrong, I want Palpatine to be powerful in this game, but in my opinion he is a little bit over the top right now. And I think that it all stems from his chain lightning and his dodging. His chain lightning is the easiest way to get kills in the game, I swear. You can get huge multi kills with just a quick press of a button and nothing more. And you can actually put on star cards that make it even more powerful. So either nerf the star cards, remove the star cards, up the cooldown for chain lightning, reduce the amount of targets it can hit, or just nerf the damage overall. There are a ton of options that they have for bringing this ability down a notch. And also, I think that Palpatine's dodges are a contributing factor to why he is so overpowered. He can get away from anyone just so easily. Now, don't get me wrong, I love screeching sheave dashes. But you cover way too much ground way too quickly. And the refresh rate for the dodges, it's really fast, so I think they need to greatly reduce Palpatine's ability to dash away and also reduce how quickly he can drain lightsaber hero stamina. Then once we get to that point, I honestly think that Palpatine will be fine. He'll still be really powerful, but he won't be broken. Now the next few things I want to touch on, I'm sort of going to just quickly gloss over them a little bit quicker as I feel like I got the main ones out of the way and wanted to give those ones their own little segment of this video. But yeah, these ones are just a bunch of things that I'm just going to touch on. So the first thing is the Clone Jet Trooper's DC-17 Blaster. It is very overpowered for a Jet Trooper. You can melt heroes in just over 2 seconds, you can take a 600 health hero down to nothing which is just kind of ridiculous, and you can kill any of the 4 classes in a second or less. Now for a 1000 battle point reinforcement, that is ridiculous. And they either need to reduce the damage of this blaster or double or even triple the battle point cost. Now also, one other thing that a lot of you guys brought up that kind of made me realise that you actually have a point is Ray's Mind Trick. Now, Ray's mind trick for people who have played the game since launch can probably deal with the inverted controls. But the thing that makes this ability a little bit over the top is the fact that it basically locks your camera into position. And I now feel like that is probably overkill and just doesn't need to happen. I think inverting controls is more than enough for an ability that you can't block. So I actually agree with you guys who brought this up. The camera lock on the mind trick, I think it needs to go. Now another thing worth bringing up is the Bounty Hunter Star Card which of course boosts the rate in which you can earn battle points. Now I think this Star Card should honestly just be taken out of the game. Because it's just become more of a necessity than an option. Because if you don't use it you're at a massive disadvantage. It's like the health on kill Star Cards for the heroes before they got passive health on kill and I think the same thing needs to happen here. And I know for a fact that a lot of you agree with me, this came up a lot when I asked you guys what was overpowered in this game. Now also another thing is General Grievous's Unrelenting Advance. Now this ability does a lot of damage and you literally can't really do anything to Grievous in this situation unless you get behind him. 
but I don't necessarily think that the damage output is the problem. But I think, especially in Heroes vs Villains, how quickly the unrelenting advance can melt your stamina, it's a little bit over the top. It literally melts your stamina instantly. Think back a few months ago when Ray's and Obi-Wan's dashes completely drained stamina. It's basically like that, and I understand why people are bringing this up. But now staying on the topic of Grievous, his claw rush hit detection makes the claw rush a little bit overpowered. You can be nowhere near him and he will still hit you. And as a hero, it knocks you over, which spells a lot of trouble. And as infantry, if Grievous has the right star cards on, it's basically a one shot. Now I've lost count of the amount of times that I've been hit with this ability despite jumping up really high in the air, clearly out of his way. The hit detection especially, just from above, it needs to be looked at. And lastly, something else that I wanted to bring up in this video, as a lot of you guys did actually mention this, and that is Luke Skywalker being a little bit too overpowered. Now, Luke's lightsaber swing speed and damage is pretty crazy. I think one of, if not both of them, is actually the best in the game for lightsaber heroes. And his ability combination lets you clear out rooms really, really easily. Luke being a little bit overpowered isn't necessarily something I would 100% agree with, but I do understand why people think it's a problem. And a lot of you guys did bring it up and I wanted to get you guys more involved in this video, so I thought I'd quickly touch on it here at the end. So guys, there is a lot to talk about here, a lot of stuff we covered, so be sure to let me know down in the comments what you think of all of this. I know a lot of people are going to agree and disagree, but let's make it civil down in the comments. At the end of the day, we all want the game to be better, and highlighting issues like this is a step into how that happens. Now, if you did go on to enjoy this video, then be sure to drop a like as it does help get these videos out there. And if you are new around here, then absolutely feel free to subscribe to the channel for more Battlefront 2 videos. But that is pretty much going to do it for today's video, guys. So thank you all for watching, and I'll talk to you all again next time.